this is our final session of six on the topic, What is the Good News of Christianity? Six Biblical Truths. So let's review the five we've seen already in the previous sessions and then look at the last one. What is the good news? God created us for his glory. Therefore, number two, it is man's joyful duty to live for the glory of God. Three, all of us have failed to glorify God as we should. Four, we are thus found to be dead in our trespasses and under God's just condemnation. So an internal deadness and an external legal condemnation under God. Five, God, not being content with that situation at all, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to save sinners from their hopeless condition of deadness and condemnation and bring us to God, our eternal joy. Which leads us now to number six in this session. All the benefits purchased by Christ in dying and rising again, all of them, all the benefits of eternal life and righteousness and no condemnation and joy in God's presence, all of them are purchased by Christ and they belong to those who are united to him by faith. United to him by faith. You cannot work for them. They are free, a free gift. If you have Christ as your Savior and Lord and treasure, you have everything in him. So here's the question. How are we united to him by faith? How does that happen? How does our faith come about? And how does union with Christ happen? You remember this text, perhaps, from last time. For our sake, he, God, made Christ to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him, in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Or Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So the big question is, how do we get in? And the first part of the answer is here in 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 30, because of him, that is God, you are in, you are in Christ Jesus. So because of him, literally, the Greek is from him, by, by him, from his doing, by his agency, are we in Christ Jesus. We don't get ourselves in. We don't climb in. We don't force our way into union with Christ. We are brought in. We are grafted in by him. But how does he do it? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. By grace, you have been saved through faith. So faith is our part in the salvation that comes by grace. And this is not your own doing. This, this grace and this faith are not your own doing. It's not from you. It is the gift of God, not of works, so that nobody can boast. You can never boast you, that you've brought yourself into a saving relationship with Jesus. It was by grace, and it was a gift. Now, here's the ground. Here's the explanation and ground for how we know it's God's work by a gift to grant us faith to save us. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. There it is created in Christ Jesus. So God, God does a new creation. 
He brings into being a new thing, namely a person in union with Jesus Christ for good works, not on the basis of good works, for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So the answer here is that there's God and grace. That's the ground of everything leading to union with Christ. The new creation leading to faith as a gift leading to saved from that deadness and from that condemnation. So there's there's God, there's grace, there's union in Christ Jesus by virtue of a new creation which leads us to a gift of God which is faith and grace and then saved from deadness and from condemnation which leads Paul to say in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation why is that? because he created us in Christ Jesus. So the creation is to put us in union with Christ so that we enjoy oneness with him and everything that he bought for us then is ours. Therefore, do not draw the conclusion, well, I guess I'll just stay in bed in the morning <laughs> and do nothing. No, precisely because he has worked the miracle, we can act the miracle. Here's what he says to the jailer when, when he asks, Sirs, what must we do to be saved? And his answer is, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household, you will be saved. And so will your house when you believe, when you believe on the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Here's the way Jesus says it in John 6, 35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger. Whoever believes, believes in me shall never thirst. So my way of defining believing here is believing in him is a coming to him for bread and for this water that takes away thirst. So the bread of life and the water of life leads us to a relationship where all of our soul thirst for God and for eternal life are satisfied. That's what belief is. Belief is coming to Jesus to be satisfied in our souls by all that he is for us all that God is for us in him. Here's another way to put it. John 1, 11 to 13. He came, Jesus came to his own and his own people did not receive him, but to all who did receive him, receive him, receive him to all who did receive him. That's what we must do. Receive him who believed in his name. So receiving or believing is defined through receiving. What does believing mean? Believing in his name, it means receiving him. He gave them the right to become the children of God. So receive him as all that he is, all that God is for us in Jesus. Receive him. If he's a treasure, receive him as a treasure. If he's a Lord, receive him as Lord. If he's a savior, receive him as savior. We we become one with him by receiving him. And Paul says it in an amazing way to stress that we don't work for it. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And it's the opposite of the way we're saved. To the one who does not work, 
but believes in him who justifies the ungodly. He declares the ungodly just and righteous by faith. His faith is counted as righteousness. So the point here is that you don't work. If you work for God, you get wages. And he says in 623 that the wages of sin is death. You're not going to be able to do anything but earn death if you work. But if you stop trying to earn your salvation by working, not working, but rather believe in him who justifies the ungodly, then your faith is going to be counted as righteousness. And another way to describe that change of heart, that embraces, receives, believes Jesus as a treasure is repentance. Acts 3.19. Repent, therefore. Turn again. Turn from unbelief and your sins will be blotted out. Sometimes people get into a big argument about whether repentance and faith are both necessary for salvation. And I'm saying repentance is just another way of describing the profound change of mind, the turning that happens when you your heart comes to believe, comes to receive, comes to treasure Jesus as all that God is for you. So... We summarize and close. The good news is that God created us for his glory. Our duty, therefore, is to live for his glory. You and I have failed. We continue to fail to glorify God as we should. Therefore, we were found to be dead in our trespasses and under condemnation. And God, rich in mercy, full of grace, not willing to leave us in that condition, sent his son Jesus to save us from our hopeless condition of deadness and condemnation and bring us to God and eternal joy. And the question is, how do we become part of that wonderful work of Jesus? And the answer is, all the benefits purchased by Christ for his people in dying and rising again belong to those who are united to him by faith. You cannot work for them. They are a free gift. You have Christ as your savior. If you have Christ as your savior, if you have Christ as your Lord, if you have Christ as your treasure by simply receiving him that way, you have everything. So I close with two invitations, and I hope you hear this very personally from my heart to yours. This is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 3. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, in other words, you can't buy it, you can't earn it, you can't buy it, who has no money, come, buy, buy without any money, buy by faith and eat, come, buy wine and milk without money, without price, it's free. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and come and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food, incline your ears ear come to me here that your soul may live and the, and the last plea from the end of the book the last book in the bible the last chapter in the bible almost the last verse of the bible the spirit and the bride that is the church say to you come And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, are you thirsty? Is your soul hungry for something the world cannot give you? Come. Let the one who desires take the water of life, eternal life, without price. You can't buy it. I'm going to pray. Father, I'm praying for everybody who has gone with me through these six gospel truths that we all would come to see Christ as true. 
and glorious and the superior truth, a superior joy, a superior treasure to anything in the world. And so bring us to faith. And may we be together someday forever with you where there is fullness of joy at your right hand forevermore. Amen.